Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. To say that we broke up would be an understatement. Our two children graduated from college and found jobs on the other side of the continent. Beth was a teacher in Oklahoma, and Jeff worked for a software development company in Denver. Our nest was empty. My wife, Bonnie, compensated by focusing more on her work. She worked in an advertising firm and made good progress there. Rose, along with a new position came new responsibilities. I was selling cement. It was a time when there wasn't much work around, but construction was booming and there wasn't enough equipment. My company could guarantee delivery, and it was expensive. Then I hit the jackpot. By the end of spring, I was able to sell almost everything I had planned for the year. I made more money than ever and worked less. I could only spend the rest of the year solving minor problems. I just needed to make sure that the goods were delivered in accordance with the terms of the contract and we were paid. Since Bonnie is used to working late several nights a week, I agreed to meet with a good client for lunch and a drink. I was supposed to meet him at a nice hotel about an hour away from home. The hotel enjoyed an excellent reputation and had a gourmet restaurant. I arrived half an hour earlier and, driving up to the parking lot, saw a Ford Explorer, the same as Bonnie's. I know that about 10 million of them are sold annually. It's not unusual to see the same model. But then I saw a yellow arrow on the left rear tire. I drew it myself, when I was looking for a puncture in the tire and thought I had found it. I made a mark to show it to the guy at the tire store. In fact, this valve turned out to be bad, but the mark on the tire remained. I knew that Bonnie could also treat customers to lunch. I've considered my options. If she was working with a client, it would probably be better if I stayed away. From my sales experience, I knew that the fewer distractions or additions to a commercial offer, the better. I went into the dining room and looked out the door, so I was sure I would see everyone before they noticed me. Bonnie wasn't in the room. The manager came over, and when I told her my name, I saw Bonnie and her colleague get out of the elevator, holding hands. I've met this guy a few times. I knew he was about my age, married, had a couple of kids, and was going bald. I must have watched a couple in love sit down in a small room by the bar. The hostess patted me on the shoulder and asked if I would follow her to my table. When the stars and planets line up correctly, the coincidences are endless. I was shown my table very close to where Bonnie and Clyde were sitting. The dining room was separated from the bar by some kind of intricate lattice crap, which did not prevent eavesdropping on the conversation. Let's hurry up and get something to eat, Romeo said. I want to ride you one more time before we leave. I remembered his name. It was Robert James, the guy with two names. He lived in the town next to us. His wife was a mouse-like woman, about 10 years younger than him. Their children were very young. I met her once at a corporate Christmas party. And I remembered that I hadn't seen her at the party last Christmas. That's right, he was chasing Bonnie back then. At that time... I was just having fun and not playing Sherlock Holmes, although I should have. Bob, you're so cool. Bonnie laughed. Where do you get all your energy? I'm keeping it for you. Katie is always tired. In fact, she even seems grateful when I come home late and just go to bed. Is your hubby trying to please you? He asked. Brian hasn't made love to me in weeks. Actually, since you and I started coming here. It's not that he wasn't interested, but I got everything I needed from you. I don't want him to find any traces of you on me or in me, she laughed. I'm too busy and too tired for him. He understands that. Well, his losses are my gains, the dick grinned. I won't say no to Brian if he insists, Bonnie replied. After all, he's my husband. I'll just talk him out of it. He is very attentive and will not force me. I'll be able to keep him like this for a while. It turns me on so much, Bonnie. When he finally gets lucky, you'll tell me all about it, okay? The poor bastard insisted. All right, Bob. I'll take notes to tell you every detail, Bonnie agreed. I heard about everything I wanted to hear, and even what I didn't want to hear. I knew that Bonnie had been extremely busy lately, but I never suspected that she was cheating on me. I sat and thought about all the ways our lives intertwined. We were financial partners. We had two children. She was my confidant and advisor. It never occurred to me that her suggestions and advice were less than sincere and did not take my interests into account. We are lovers, well, at least we were. I had to rethink a lot. Fortunately, 
They quickly ate a sandwich and returned to their room before my client arrived. He was a loud guy and would have given away my presence if Bonnie was still behind bars. Even after my lunch and negotiations, I was home before Bonnie. I decided not to tell her that I knew about her game. I had to think it over and decide what was best for me. I realized that for the first time in years, I had to make some pretty dramatic decisions without Bonnie's advice. It was clear that I had to think about creating a life for myself in which she would no longer have a place. I needed to learn more about myself and what I needed to be happy. It was almost 10 o'clock when Bonnie returned home. By that time, I was watching TV and felt very sorry. Why should I stay at home while she makes love to the hell out of her eyes and has a good time? I needed to work on my life. Hello, darling, she greeted me, kissing me on the cheek. I realized that a kiss was already much more than I wanted from her. I'm not the kind of guy who's willing to share his woman, at least not reluctantly. Because she was making love to another guy, I no longer felt like she was mine. I also didn't feel her loyalty or devotion to her. This connection was severed. It saddened me. I couldn't deny it. She told me what a hard day she had had and went to bed. I was sitting in front of the TV trying to decide if I should try to get revenge, and if so, how? I thought about it until late at night. I finally admitted to myself that she had been my wife, partner, and lover for too long to try to hurt her. We had two children. She was their mother. She took care of her needs. I needed to focus on my own. After many years of marriage and parenting, I'm used to taking care of my needs last. Now it was more important that I take care of myself and take steps to make my life the way it should be. Focusing on revenge would be a waste of my efforts and time. My happy life will be the best payback. I slept very little that night. I got up early the next day. He left the house before Bonnie got out of bed. I really didn't have the heart to see or hear her. The problem was, where should I go? I didn't even know that many places are open at 6 in the morning. Driving down some street, I saw several cars in the parking lot, and it wasn't a donut shop. I looked at the sign above the door and saw that it was a gym. On a whim, I stopped and looked around the place. The girl told me that it is open from 5 in the morning until 11 at night. I thought it would give me the opportunity to come here and avoid Bonnie most of the time. I signed up. I went to work feeling a little better than I had since I saw Bonnie with her dumb bastard. I started my personal journey to the next stage of my life. I heard a few guys talking about their golf game at lunch. I played golf before I got married, but raising children took up all my free time and energy. I haven't played for over 20 years, but I joined the conversation and was invited to play with them on Saturday. I left the office early and bought myself some golf clubs. I heard that tailor-maids are very good, so I spent almost $1,000 on a good set, bag, shoes, umbrella, balls, t-shirts, towels, and everything else that could be useful. It was the first time in many years that I had done something special for myself. It was great. Then I bought something for the gym. I decided that I would lose a few pounds and maybe add a few years to my life. If I go on dates again, I need to look my best. It was after eight when I brought my purchases home. A golf club? Bonnie asked. Have you been there? I was worried that you weren't home when I came home from work. Yes, I'm playing golf again, I admitted. You don't usually come home this early, so I thought I might be a little late one day. I'm not complaining, Brian. It's good that you have somewhere to go. You work hard enough to deserve it, Bonnie said. But you left early this morning. I'm just wondering if anything has happened. What could be wrong, dear? A good home, two beautiful children, a loving, faithful wife. This is what every man hopes for, but few have, I boasted. Bonnie gave me a quick glance. Obviously, she didn't see any signs that I suspected her, and she smiled. By the time I laid out my purchases, I realized that I was very tired. I didn't sleep well and got up early. I'm exhausted, I told Bonnie. I'm going to bed. See you tomorrow. She was surprised. It was about 9 o'clock, and I never went to bed before the evening news. She should be happy, I thought, and immediately fell asleep and did not hear when she went to bed. The next morning I got up at 4.30. I took a shower, shaved, and went to the gym a few minutes after 5. I tried all the simulators and chose a few that worked on the parts of the body that I needed the most. I used a treadmill for a while and was shocked at how tired I got. I started training on time. I was surprised by how many people were training so early. 
I found them friendly and helpful. It was like a subculture that shared similar goals and supported each other's attempts to achieve them. I got sweaty, took a shower again and went to the office. After work, I went to the training field. I took some of my clubs out of my bag and spent an hour hitting golf balls. It didn't work out well at first, but soon I developed a rhythm and hit the ball pretty well. I realized that improvements in hardware over the past 20 years would help my game. I stopped at a small diner, had a leisurely dinner, and headed home. It wasn't even 9 o'clock, and I had already gone to bed. Bonnie wasn't home, but I realized she was probably in bed with a piece of shit. That was the last thought I remembered before it was time to get up and go to the gym. Bonnie was sleeping next to me, so she must have made it home at some point. That same day, after work, I bought myself a place at the country club. Then I went and played there with another guy looking for company. It was about 8 o'clock when I got home. Bonnie was annoyed. Why didn't you tell me you weren't coming home right after work, Brian? She demanded an answer. Where are you going so early in the morning? Have you checked your answering machine, Bonnie? I left you a message, the way you usually do, I replied. I go to the gym on 5th Street in the morning. I've become too bloated. I realized that she felt stupid for not even thinking about listening to the message. The shoe was on the other foot. I should have checked my answering machine, but you never leave messages like I do, she protested weakly. You never said anything about going to the gym. You should have told me. I can go there too. Well, darling, please, but it looks like you're already giving your best all day and you're already falling off your feet by nightfall, I replied. Do you want to get up at 4.30 and go to the gym? Is this a passive, aggressive way to get me to make love more often? Bonnie asked. That's what you mean when you say I get tired at night, isn't it? That's not really the case, I replied with a wry smile. I'm trying to improve my health. Everything is simple and clear. I invite you to join me. So you're not trying to make me feel guilty about not being in love? Bonnie repeated. No way, Bonnie. I am very attentive, as you well know. You work a lot and under stress. You're exhausted when you get home, I reasoned. I understand everything perfectly. All right, Brian. I had a pretty good day today. And I'm not that tired today, if you know what I mean, she smiled shyly. The thought of making love to her made me sick. Well, that's great. And I got up early, practiced, and played golf. I'm literally gutted today. And I'm going to go to bed, I told her. Bonnie was stunned. In all the years we spent together, she always determined when we would make love. I never refused when I was offered. She assumed that I would be delighted with the dice she would throw me. I left her standing, speechless, and I felt like I was finally gaining control of my life, and it was great. I started playing golf right after work when the weather allowed. I thought Bonnie would like that. This gave her the opportunity not to leave the house in the evenings. Over time, my game improved and I played better than some of the guys who have been playing consistently for the last 20 years. I attributed some of my successes to the gym. I could go faster and further. My stomach, chest, and shoulders got stronger, and it helped me beat the crap out of the golf ball. Soon a woman a couple of years younger than me came to the gym. We immediately found a common language and worked on simulators together. We encouraged each other and joked. The training has become better and more interesting. Her name was Tiffany, and she was a lawyer. She worked for a small firm in another town not far from mine. In the end, she told me how one day she came home from work early and found her hubby doing dirty business with a married neighbor. She divorced him and moved to her current home a few blocks from the gym. Her two children were in college, and she decided it was time for her to improve her life and health. It took a few days before I plucked up the courage to tell her about my situation. She listened and did not express any opinion. She just nodded, as if it were an old story. Bonnie started complaining about me playing golf late and going to the gym early. I don't think it really bothered her, well, except that she was worried that I was happy and enjoying life. She wanted a monopoly on happiness, and I think she felt like she was losing control of me. We haven't had dinner together just a few times in the last month, she said one evening when I entered the house after dark. You spend every night playing golf, unless it's raining like hell. Do you want to have dinner together every night next week? I suggested. It doesn't have to be every night, Brian, she said. We could just plan one evening. I'll have to work late anyway. I see. You want me to take my mind off playing golf one night of your choosing. Then let's plan for Tuesday night. Will it work? I never know in advance. 
It happens in different ways. I have some important clients that I work with, she pouted. Bonnie, you don't want to dedicate any particular evening to me, but you want me to sit and wait for a window in your schedule to have dinner together. My time and hobbies are important to me. I'm not going to sit back and wait for you to make time for me again. You play and I work, Bonnie insisted. There is a nuance, isn't there? She might as well have taken a baseball bat and hit me over the head. She really believed that I was so damn dumb that I would feel guilty because she was working so hard. Is she working with Bob and should I feel guilty? It was becoming quite obvious that I was on the right track when I decided to build my life for myself. I even started to rethink my attitude towards revenge. I'll tell you what, Bonnie. Next time it rains like hell and you don't have to work, we'll have dinner together, I agreed. Well, thank you very much. I hate spoiling a good golf game. She was angry. Good girl. That's what we'll do. I agreed. Are you seeing anyone, Brian? You've been acting weird lately, Bonnie noted. Suddenly I started going to the gym and became interested in golf after so many years of hiatus. It seems suspicious. Bonnie, don't be a fool. It's no more suspicious than when you suddenly have to work so hard in the evenings after all these years of routine, isn't it? I asked. I didn't complain or accuse you of dating some guy. Did I? Bonnie blushed and stormed out of the room. The next morning, I was walking on the treadmill next to Tiffany. We walked at a brisk pace, and I never realized there was anyone else in the room until I heard my name. Brian, who's your friend? Demanded a voice that could be heard over the noise of the simulators. I stopped the treadmill. Hey, Bonnie, have you decided to join me? I greeted her with a big smile. No, damn it. I want to know who this woman is. Bonnie growled. Tiffany heard Bonnie too and stopped the treadmill. She walked over to where Bonnie and I were standing. Hello, I'm Tiffany Blunt, she replied, holding out her hand to Bonnie. Bonnie was suspicious, but uncertain. She was surprised by Tiffany's frankness. A woman involved in an affair will not be so friendly. Of course, Bonnie should know all about it. She slowly took Tiffany's hand in hers and shook it. Hi, Tiffany, my wife replied. I'm Bonnie, Brian's wife. We've been married for 25 years. Do you work with Brian? No, we work out in the same gym, that's all. I'm a lawyer. I don't even know what Brian does. Are you going to the gym, Bonnie? Tiffany asked. That wouldn't be a bad thing. To be honest, I've been thinking about it. I just don't like getting up so early, Bonnie replied reluctantly. It was just great. Now Bonnie was thinking of invading my new life as well. I didn't see how it could be good for me. I was about to object, but realized that it would be a tactical mistake. Bonnie would never get up so early to look after me. Her approach was to get me to quit. It would be much easier to keep an eye on me if I slept in bed. So, why did you get up so early? I asked. Is something wrong? No, I just had to get up early for work today. So I decided to come in here at the same time and see what it's like, Bonnie offered her version. I knew it was a lie. She had never had to get up two hours earlier. She got up early to go to the gym, just to check on me. Well, let him be jealous of Tiffany. She found me with an attractive woman. Bonnie will understand everything the right way. Although, if she had looked around, she would have noticed a few more fit and beautiful women in the gym. It amused me that Bonnie was categorically against me getting any pleasure out of life. Why was she jealous of me? It was used several times a week. What did she really want? I wonder if she even knew about it. I didn't do a damn thing wrong, and I didn't care. I started to get my life back on track, and I loved it. Bonnie talked to me about nothing for a few minutes and then left. I went back to my treadmill, where Tiffany was waiting for me. She thinks you're up to something, Brian. It was obvious that she was checking out the gym. You, me, and all the other women here, Tiffany said. People always project their behavior onto others. If they cheat, they assume that others are cheating too. Your wife doesn't trust you at all. It's ironic, but very typical. My husband has always been jealous of me, for no reason. He was unfaithful, so he thought I should be unfaithful too. I thought about what Tiffany had said for the rest of the day. I left work early to play 18-hole golf. I didn't play particularly well because I was thinking about what to do with Bonnie. Sooner or later, I would have to let her know that I knew everything. What then? Divorce seemed to be the only solution, although the thought saddened me. 
I've been with Bonnie for 25 years, and we've raised two wonderful children. It was very bad that she felt a need that she couldn't satisfy with me. But her affair was unacceptable for any reason. Even if she didn't take care of me, it was a married man with young children. It was unforgivable. When I got home that night, Bonnie was all smiles. I even wondered what she had planned, since she rarely behaved so warmly, at least with me. Soon she was sitting next to me on the couch, sipping wine, and I was enjoying a cold beer. Brian, we haven't made love in months. Don't you miss it? Don't you want to make love anymore? What is it? She asked. I've been expecting this question for weeks. It took her a very long time to express her surprise at my celibacy. Bonnie, I'm a realist. I directed my energy to other things. Things that don't require anyone's permission, participation, or pleasure. It really frees me up. You've been giving me all kinds of signals that you don't need anything. I don't believe that this is something I need to ask for, fight for, or pay for. Honestly, it's not worth it. So you think it's my fault, Brian? Bonnie snapped. I've been working hard, and you haven't been very romantic lately. You're always playing golf or going to that damn gym. You haven't even hit on me in a couple of months. I suspect that's what's bothering you, Bonnie. I didn't ask, so you couldn't refuse me. It robs you of the pleasure of refusing me in bed when I don't seem to mind, doesn't it? That's not true, Brian. Bonnie exclaimed. If you don't get a woman in the right mood, she won't want to make love. Well, there shouldn't be a problem if that's the case. Until I get on my damn head. It's just not going to happen. Now Bonnie was really stumped. She was trying to make me want to make love to her. She wanted me to be romantic. The thought didn't appeal to me. This game didn't turn me on anymore. If you don't want to make love to me, Brian, I have to assume that you might be having an affair, she said. I'll fucking burn you if you're having an affair. Keep that in mind. She made me angry. I couldn't believe she was such a hypocrite. She was fucked two or three times a week, and she was angry that I might think the same thing. What kind of logic is this? At that moment, I decided to take revenge. I'll tell you what, Bonnie. To prove it to you, let's go to our lawyer and draw up a contract stating that if I cheat on you at any time, you will receive the house and all our savings. If I am so terrible, spouse, I must suffer for my rash actions, I suggested. Does that sound like a man having an affair? I think you could suggest doing this just to get me off the track, Brian. I know how treacherous you are. I think I'll accept your offer, she agreed. All right, I replied. I'll call my lawyer tomorrow and set up an appointment. I'll tell him that we want him to be able to complete the paperwork when we arrive. There was no future for our marriage. I knew I couldn't ignore Bonnie's infidelity anymore, but I hadn't wanted to take the steps necessary to put an end to it before. It took a while, but now I was ready to take the next step towards getting my life back. Three days later, we arrived at the lawyer's office. I went there from work, as did Bonnie. When I entered, she was in the waiting room. I sat down next to her and smiled. A few minutes later, the secretary escorted us to the lawyer's office. We exchanged the usual pleasantries and got down to business. I was curious to see Bonnie's reaction to this suggestion. It's a little unusual, but, of course, you can do as you want, the lawyer began. I have a document stating that each of you will lose the right to your home, savings, or pension of the other if you are found to be unfaithful to your marriage vows. The offended spouse largely receives all the common property. I watched the lawyer's words sink into Bonnie. Her smile disappeared and she became worried. Any of us? What is it? She asked. I thought it would happen if Brian cheated. Why did you include me? My instructions were to draft the document that way, Mrs. Myers. Do you want Mr. Myers to be the only one responsible, not you? He asked. Yes, that's what I expected, Bonnie replied. What are you doing, Brian? I really don't see a problem, dear, I replied. You wanted something that would protect you if I got lost. It sounded like a good idea, and I thought it would be just as good for both of us. Is there any reason why you can't sign up for this? Is something wrong? I showed my best game. I even seemed sincere and unsuspecting to myself. Will she fall into a trap? I just didn't know that I would give up my rights too, she replied. You mean you want me to give up my rights, as you call it, but you don't want to take the same punishment yourself? I asked. Why are you so reluctant to sign this document? 
but at the same time you so want me to sign it. Is there anything I need to know? Now she was excited. I could see the thoughts running through her head. Like most unfaithful spouses, she really believed that she would never be caught and did not want to arouse suspicion by refusing to sign what she wanted me to sign. Of course not, Brian, Bonnie assured me. I will be glad to sign it. With a stroke of the pen, her fate was sealed. I quickly signed the contract, and our lawyer signed as a witness and notarized the document. He promised to send us our copies, of course, along with his bill. Let's stop for a bite to eat, Bonnie, since we've already left work, I suggested. It's been so long since we went to dinner together. I can't do it tonight, Brian. I need to finish some contracts, Bonnie refused. I knew she was going to see her bastard, and it really annoyed me. I've lost any doubts or feelings of remorse I had about the contract we just signed. I was watching TV when Bonnie finally came in. I strung a worm on a hook and waited to see if she would swallow it. I need to go to Baltimore this weekend, Bonnie. The customer complained about the quality of our product. I need to see what the problem is and fix it, I told her. I will leave on Friday morning and return on Sunday afternoon. Is this normal? You're warning me too late, Brian, Bonnie said. But if you have to go, you have to go. I'm just going to spend a quiet weekend at home. I knew she was thrilled, but she also knew it wasn't worth showing it. Why not be naughty, as she knows how, and at the same time keep everything normal? On Friday evening, I quietly opened the door of our bedroom and entered the room. I reached out and flipped the switch. Bonnie blinked at the sudden light and looked at me. Hi, Bonnie. How are you, Bob? I asked rhetorically, entering the room. Bonnie, I have something for you. Although, actually, this gentleman has something for you. The constable I hired to serve the divorce papers came up to Bonnie and served her. He nodded to Bonnie and left the room. Bonnie finally realized that she was in a somewhat compromised position and slipped under the covers with him. She tried to speak, but there were no words. I don't want you to feel left out, Bob, I continued. Your wife is here and wants to say a few words to you. Mrs. James, you have the floor, I smiled, taking a couple of steps to the side so that everyone could see the wife of this dick standing behind me. You pathetic bastard. Never come home. My parents were right about you, asshole. I'd like to rip off your sausage and feed it to you. You'd rather use that old cheater than your own wife. She shouted. Bonnie flinched at her words, but made no protest. She and Bob just cowered under the sheets while his wife was shitting. You can keep this sloppy fool, because I'm divorcing you, and I'm pretty sure I'll get a good settlement. Mr. Myers was kind enough to give his testimony if I needed it. I'm sure the constable will be a good witness too. I promised Mr. Myers that I would keep this shit away, she practically giggled, and pressed herself against the wall. That was my line, asshole. I intervened when I reached out and grabbed Bob's thin hair. We have a little problem here, I said calmly. There is a man in my house, in my bed, and in my wife, and it's not me. I picked him up and dragged him into the hallway. He squirmed, but I kept his head low and kept walking, so he couldn't put up any real resistance. I dragged him down the stairs, literally, after he fell halfway down. I just kept walking. He managed to get up and we went to the door. I opened it, dragged him out onto the porch, and kicked him out onto the driveway. Then I went back inside. I looked up the stairs and saw his wife standing there, smiling through her tears. In the bedroom, I heard Bonnie finally start crying. I walked Mrs. James to her car and drove her home. I realized that Bob must have had the keys stashed in his car or in his ass because his car drove off my driveway. I know some people would think that I should have used his wife for revenge, but it didn't even occur to me. She was a suffering woman. I'd be the worst scumbag if I hurt her anymore. If you stoop to those you despise, then you have no reason to despise them, do you? When I got home, Bonnie had already packed some clothes and was carrying her suitcase down the stairs. I was very glad that she didn't start telling me that it was just an affair and that she really loves me and only me. I came to the conclusion that she didn't love me and I wondered if she loved herself. Her actions towards me were cruel, even sadistic. Humiliation didn't turn me on. I took a beer from the fridge and returned to the living room. She looked at me with a mixture of anger and sadness. You knew all along and set me up, didn't you? What is it? She asked. I have always felt that those who seek revenge, like terrorists, 
cannot be truly effective if the victim does not know who did this to them and why. You've always been smart, Bonnie. Don't let the door hit you in the ass when you come out. I nodded at her and opened a cold beer.